I don't know how. Hallelujah. I'm taking a big fan of now. Amen. You ready, Apostle? Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Listen, I'm I'm trying to um, reconnect. My head is chopped a little bit here. Praise be to God. Um, praise God. That's that's about what I can say at this moment. Bear with me. I'm going to try to add the Clubhouse family. Um, as you all can see, I guess you get you got a little bit of a taste of the fight that has been. <laughs> that has been in getting on. Um, but this is this is not a one day thing. This is like um, practically all the time that I'm trying to go live. This is the fight that I have with going, with going live. So, but I do apologize. Listen, you know, as, as the scripture says, I concur. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast unto the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And I pray tonight that those that have connected with us here in Clubhouse, those that have connected on Facebook, um, that you will be blessed. You will be glad um, as you have tuned in, as you are listening in um, to tonight's teaching as we're discussing this um, Apostle, real quick, if you can mute in Clubhouse, I'm getting feedback. I apologize. So um, once again, welcome, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> We're at the end of it, but still, um, you know, blessings to you all, uh, my kingdom, family, and friends. Thank you all for tuning in, joining in with me for tonight's discussion. I thank you for your patience. Thank you for... Um, I'm trying to figure out how to mute him, but I don't see how to mute your apostle. So I don't, I don't. Okay. I got you. Thank you. I got you. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your prayers as we work this all out to get in tonight's teaching. Um, for those of you that are, that may be listening to, to this for the first time, whether it be live with me here or um, by replay, uh, I want to thank you for um, dropping in, coming in, stopping by, stopping in. Um, but just to let you know, um, you know, Kingdom Living Prophetic Worship Center, uh, Kingdom Living is exactly that. We we go into the scriptures, into the Bible, and we're dealing with Kingdom Living in accordance with not my man's idea, but God's idea. And the best way to know what God's idea of Kingdom Living is is to get into the Word. And so that's where journey through the scriptures comes in. We journey through the scripture to discover the kingdom of God for our everyday life situations, everyday life circumstances, challenges, and so forth. So what we're doing is we're journeying through the scriptures as we discover the kingdom of God and applying biblical instructions, not man's instructions, not man's ideology, but biblical instructions to our everyday life our everyday situations and circumstances, challenges, conflict. Um, you know, we're applying that to our life. Guess what? In doing so, this is where we are dying daily, okay? So for those of you that you may not be, um, you know, you know, may not be saved yet. You may not be a child of God. You may not have confessed to me, yet, but you hear us talking about dying. You like, what you mean? I gotta, I gotta kill myself, and you don't quite understand. Let me give you an understanding of what that is. You're dying to self, meaning your own ideologies or the ideologies that you picked up along the way from different people. You're dying to that, and you're taking on the identity of the kingdom of God. That means your will, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. That's where that comes in, right? So I want to say that as it relates to uh, tonight's conversation, my topic, as you can see, an apostle, apostle has been talking about it. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. When it comes to the kingdom of God, this is certainly essential. This is very essential when it comes to the kingdom of God and how we live our lives, how we conduct ourselves and so forth. It is very essential for us to be careful, little mouth, what you say. Apostle has already um, you know, quoted this. I've been listening as I've been trying to get in. So, you know, we, we hear in the scripture where it talks about the mouth being that unruly member. It's an unruly member. And I believe it's in the book of James um, that references this. And but let me let you know something. The scripture tells us this and I'm jumping all I'm jumping way into this. But we're going to get into the 
we're going to get into the scripture. I've got a lot of scriptures that we're going to hit on tonight that's going to prayerfully help us as we go through this. Um, I'm jumping in. I'm excited about this word. I'm telling you, you're going to hear me um, even share some some experiences of myself. I'm, I'm going to open up and share some things by the by the grace of God, even concerning myself. OK, it was you know, where it hit me, but also it helped me to identify not just myself, but things that was happening to me through other people. And prayerfully, it will do the same thing for you. All right. So again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining in. The scripture tells us that it's an unruly member. But guess what? When you say I am a child of God and you say I have the Holy Ghost, the scripture says to us, right? When after that, that you have received the Holy Ghost, you shall receive what? Power. 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 He says, you power. shall receive power. Come on and help me teach on this, Apostle. He says, you shall receive you. power. It's not power. the power for you to speak in tongues. Come on. It's not the power for you to shout and dance. It's not oh. the power for you to run all over the church and roll all over the place. It's the power to exercise discipline with that tongue. That unruly member, you now have the power to rule. You now yeah. have the power to control if you have the Holy Ghost. Come on, you have the power. So we're not going to use the scripture says that the tongue is an unruly member as an excuse to go loosey goosey and with other people's lives and other and to destroy <laughs> families, destroy, destroy ministry, destroy, destroy lives. Come on, we're going to die to self, exercise self control on that unruly member. Ex use your Holy Ghost for something other than shouting around the church. Use your Holy Ghost for something other than speaking in demonic tongues okay <laughs> all right don't don't let me calm calm down it it. i told you i'm excited about this, but I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get on in i'm gonna get on in i can't see the comments but i'm, I'm gonna try to keep up with, with what's going on on facebook uh but y'all y'all already know what, what, what my struggle is y'all already know my struggle so if i don't That's respond it. to your comments i'm gonna try yeah, to catch you, up later i'm just gonna get about. on into this listen I jot down a couple of notes, but those of you that's familiar with me, you all know how, how it is. I allow Holy Spirit to speak, so I have my notes, but I'm under the control, willingly under the control of Holy Spirit. So I go with him. I go with God, all right? But understand this right quick. As children of God, it, we are expected. It is an expectation OK, this is not a this is not option. This is not pick and choose and refuse as to whether or not you're going to live according to the kingdom of God, live according to the will of God, live according to the word of God. It is expected that we as children of God govern our lives by the kingdom of God. That means our actions, our will, our conversations, come on, our tongue. It should be governed by the kingdom of God principles, laws, his commands, right? So no, we, we, we don't get away with the tongue is an unruly member that no longer, that's no longer, as the scripture says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Okay, you know better, do better. Okay, you know what your tongue is doing, do better. We're not going to say, I'm just being real. I'm just being me. No, God doesn't want you to be you, especially if you is hurting somebody, especially if you is destroying families, especially if you is causing somebody to commit suicide. Come on. Some of the words that we say is the reason why some people got mental issues today, because we just being real. We just being us. And guess what? You being real and you being, being you is what's killing folks. That's why we have hurting people. Because you feel like you have the right to be you. You have the right to just speak your mind. Guess what? Control that mind. Control that tongue. Control you. All right? Especially when it comes to hurting one another. Um, you know, uh, on this week, on this week, and uh, we had Prophetess Pamela. <laughs> we had Prophetess Pamela Bobian on, and she was talking about um, unforgiveness. And in doing so, it delved into um, you know, some things that cause people to be hurt and words spoken is one of the things that cause people to hurt. Apostle um, tagged in on that and he shared some things as well. And even before that, 
uh, Prophetess uh, Brathway, she was on on last week and she was teaching um, also on, on the mouth, right? She was talking about um, the things that we say, the words that we say. And so, you know, I'm just coming to tag along. I'm, I'm just coming in to add, you know, what Holy Spirit has, has brought forth into my spirit. And I'm going to tell you literally what it did was it pushed me ahead because as we have been having this conversation, love on trial, um, this was one of the things that was on my list to discuss as love on trial, um, but it pushed it ahead because that's, you know, that's the vein that we have been in, you know, the unction of the Holy Spirit. He's like, okay, you, you've got to release this. You've got to minister this now. And so I went from where it was on my, on my roster, on my, uh, what do you call it? On my, my syllabus, you know, I went from that and I had to move it up so that we can go ahead and address this. We talk about love. This is why love is on trial. The scripture says to us, Jesus said unto us in the book of Matthew, I believe it was the book of Matthew chapter 22. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. This is one of the great, the one of the greatest commandments. He says there are two commandments that is great, right? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. He says, and the next one is to love your neighbor as yourself. Let me help us to understand because we, we've got this thing kind of twisted. We feel like it's okay to say I love a person but then destroy them with our words destroy right. them by talking about them destroy them by releasing word curse negative words into their lives these are not demonstrations that's of right. love that's okay? right this is where your love goes on trial this is the test of your love when you say you love someone whether it be your child whether it be your parents whether it be your leader whether it be friends associate affiliates whichever when we are saying that we are walking in love it should be demonstrated by the words that we allow to release out of our mouth apostle said this so let me go ahead and tag it on in there blessing and cursing should not come out of the same mouth no wow whoa Hello, that everybody. Blessings and cursing shall not come out of the same mouth. And you're wanting to say that when you're gossiping of somebody, when you're lying about someone, even if you're telling the truth, it, it, is, it is not conversation worthy if it's negative. If it's about something that they messed up in, you bringing it up is not conversation worthy. It's not a good thing. It's not a blessing. It is a curse for you to rehearse somebody's mistakes, somebody's shortcomings, somebody's failings. Come on, for you to rehearse that, that is not a blessing. That is a curse. That can be a stumbling blessing lock unto them to know that it is being conversed, to know that it is being talked about amongst people. It's in the streets or whichever, right? And so blessing and cursing should not come out of the same mouth. Let me go ahead and tag this on there. If they did fall, if they did stumble and fall with what they what they did or what they said, right? What does the scripture tell us to do? Again, demonstrations of love. I'm pulling it all out there and I haven't Put it out to, there. My, Put it out to there. my written text yet. I Put it out there. To what I've been what I wrote down yet, yeah, but we're going to get to that in just a moment because I got a whole lot to offload on there. And Minister Norman, I know you you really good. You are very, very astute biblical scholar. I'm, I'm counting on you to put those scriptures out, out on the on the thing right there so that people can follow up with what it is I'm talking about. OK, but the scripture lets us know, brethren, if you see one that is overtaken in a fall, you who are spiritual, that means you are mature in the things of God. You're walking that. Come on. You're not stumbling and falling, too. You're not making mistakes on a regular basis. You're not habitually walking in sin, too. He says you who are spiritual. Now, one of the things that's going on is, is that we have those that are stumbling intentionally and intentionally on a regular basis that are discussing the faults and the failures of each other. Okay, there's something wrong about that. That puts us in the category of hypocrisy. I know I'm, I'm hitting a lot of stuff, but I'm going to calm down in just a moment and we're going to hit those scriptures. But he says, you who are spiritual, go to the one that has fallen, that has messed up, that has stumbled, that come on, that has fallen by the wayside of whichever and restore them. That doesn't mean that you go to, to the deacon board, the missionary board, the evangelist, the apostle, and all of these other people. It doesn't mean that you take their name in the street while you go to restore them or you have to go and you testify about how you restore them that no 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 that's no that's not what he said to do he says you who are spiritual do what restore them in a spirit of what in
in a spirit of meekness. Why? Because you yourself may find yourself in the same falling that they have found themselves in. Love your neighbor as yourself. Would you want somebody to do to you what you've now done to them by taking their dirt and spreading it through the streets? Now, Ooh, that's love your right. neighbor as yourself. Would you want somebody to do that? Would you want to know that somebody is gossiping about you? Would you want to know that somebody is spreading all your mess? You're, you've been exposed now. You, you have been found naked now. You have been found wandering in the desert without your coat, without, you know, without your, your garments that you support, your garment of righteousness on. You've been found without it. Did you, do you want the one that discovered your nakedness to now put that on the streets? No, you would not. So why do it to your neighbor? Why do it to your friend? It doesn't matter what position it is. I'm not just talking to the leaders. I'm talking to us as a body of Christ. This is what we do. No, I digress. This is what y'all do. I've been delivered. This is what y'all do. All right? So let's I hit this. That. I know that. Let's go ahead and hit this. Yes, James says that the tongue is an unruly member. But after that, that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power to thread upon that tongue to exercise control over that tongue, to stop your tongue from wagging, for stop your tongue from being loosey-goosey with other people's business. Hey, hello, somebody. Okay, all right, so let me go ahead and get up on in here. Um, you know, <laughs> I wrote down a lot of scriptures and I wanna hit them and, and I'm going to, um, you know, because one of the things we have to understand that is this, when as we as children of God, I said that it is expected for us to live our lives governed by kingdom principles, by kingdom instructions as believers, as a child of God, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, however you want to to identify yourself. OK, if you are under this header of saying I am a child of God, it is expected that our lives, our tongue our mouth be governed by the kingdom of God. And so therefore it is necessary for us to understand this. When you go loosey goosey, when we're gossiping, whether it's something, and this is another issue is that some of the things that we're gossiping, gossiping about isn't even firsthand knowledge. Sometimes it's things that we heard about. You heard it through the grapevine. You don't even know if it's true. We're destroying lives on things that we heard, gossip that we heard. We didn't even witness it, okay? But spreading it through, okay, like it is the gospel. We don't even spread the gospel like we heard, we spread dirt, okay? We don't even spread the gospel like we spread gossip. That's a good point. But we're spreading what we heard, not what we know. And it's destroying lives. It's hurting people. And this is where we have to exercise control. We have to exercise self-discipline, self-control over that unruly member. God is not, listen, God does not like gossip. We're, that's why we're going to find text in here that tells us about that. Listen, he is not in favor of, he is not pleased when his children are involved in gossip, in slander, in lies, in bickering, in confusion, in things that brings division. He is not pleased. He does not like it. He abhors it, as a matter of fact. All right. So <laughs> here's where we're gonna go. Let me let me go ahead and find my scriptures. Let's start here. We're gonna we're gonna hit hit a lot of um scriptures, as I said. Um, and I pray that you write them down. You can go and you can look at them for yourself. Um, whether you do it while we're on this teaching or um, you, you reserve it for later. If you're, if you're working or driving or whichever, I pray that you will take some time to, to look these up, meditate on them, pray on them. Uh, you allow, use them as you pray and ask the Lord to bring you into alignment with his word. When we talk about coming into alignment, that means that, you know, what his word says is what we're doing. That's coming into alignment, coming into agreement with it. You're not you're not be, you're not being dragged, kicking and screaming to do the will of God. You're not being dragged, kicking and screaming to be obedient and to be submissive. You are willing and obedient. 
because he says those that are willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land. You have to be willing and obedient. Okay. All right. So let's go to the book of Exodus. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 20. Let me start there. I, I don't even know what order I'm going to be going in. I'm just going to, I'm just going to hit them and we're going to go through them um, as I do. All right. So Exodus chapter 20. And if I can just read verse 16, this area is known as the, the commandments that God had given unto uh, his children. And let me just say this. Um, let me go ahead and say this. Um, yes, we are under grace, but the grace does not absolve you from the government of the kingdom. The government of kingdom is God's way of doing things. All right, God's way of doing things. God's way of doing things is written in his book called the Bible. God's way of doing things is written in this book called the Bible. Biblical in strict instructions Before for those we... of us living here in the earth. So verse 16, here's what it says unto us. It says, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Now I'm reading from the NIV translation. You might be reading from a translation that reads slightly different, but its meaning should overall come to this. You shall not bear a false witness against your neighbor. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Come on. We're not going to tell tales. We're not going to tell lies. We're not even going to spread rumors if it's true. Help me. We're not even going to spread rumors if it's true. Now we've been, we've been quoting James three, that unruly member, James chapter three is where that came from. Okay. For those of you that, that are looking for that, James chapter three is where you can find it. Now let's look at um, the book of Proverbs and see what Proverbs is saying to us about slander because slander again this this falls in the category of gossip false being a false witness okay so let's go into the book of proverbs right quick and, and because i'm late <laughs> with all the difficulties that we've been having i, I know i'm late so what i want to do evangelist to one i see you over here in the club all right blessings to you Thank you for your patience and your prayers. I'm so glad you were able to log back in, um, log back in with us. So I said the book of Proverbs, right? So I'm going to begin with Proverbs chapter six. Proverbs chapter six. We're going to do quite a bit of reading here, but I want us to see biblical instructions, biblical instructions so that you, you don't think this is Raquel's idea because it's not. It's not Raquel's idea. This is God's idea, right? The kingdom is God's idea, right? And so that's what we're, that's what we want to put in practice, God's idea. So Proverbs chapter six, Proverbs chapter six, let's read. I want to go to 16. Here's what it says. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haunty eyes, a lying tongue. Come on. Sometimes we're spreading gossip and those gossip be lies. You hear me? You spreading gossip, you don't know if it's true or lie. Your ignorance is not bliss. Your ignorance will cause condemnation it will cause judgment to come upon you because you are spreading gossip you are spreading lies and these are one of the things that's listed as what god hates he says i hate a lying tongue of course i'm going to read the rest just for <laughs> just so that you can you you got it right so he says also hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devises wicked schemes there are those that are gossiping and lying and spreading um information about people's lives and it's with malicious intent it is with it was evil and wickedness in their heart that has them doing it okay uh you know and so we're 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 helping them in their plight we're helping them 
in their plan to spread malicious, wicked, evil intentions about someone, all right? And that, that causes me to hit on the root. It causes me to hit on the root behind gossip and, and lies and, and rumors and slanders that is that goes out about one another. So while we're tagging on with what's being said, consider the root behind this. We have people that are doing this and there's malicious intent. Some of them, they're doing it because they were hurt by the individual. Some of them are doing it because they, be, they were angry because of something that the individual said or did. We have those that even, even in the body of Christ, their leader said something and it hurt their feelings it stepped on their toes and so they became angry at what was said it exposed them it, even though it might have been unintentional he probably didn't even know she probably didn't know that she had exposed them okay but he was just ministering the word of god and in their anger at what had been said they were chastised they you know there was you chastisement that was brought forth in their anger they were not willing to receive chastisement they open up their mouth this becomes evil and this becomes wicked maliciously begin to spread lies, spread rumors, or something that they know about that individual, they begin to spread it, right? So we have to begin to identify the root behind these things. It's not just happening to happen. It, there's a root behind it. There's more intentions behind it, okay? And so out of anger, they begin to speak. Out of hurt, a person that has been hurt by someone, knowing or unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, they've been hurt. And in their hurt, they open up their mouth and they begin to speak words. And because we're not discerning of what's going on, discerning, this person is speaking out of their hurt. This person is speaking out of their anger. This spoke, This person is speaking out of hatred. This person is speaking out of, come on, jealousy. Okay, we're not discerning what is going on. And so we just opening up our ears to hear and after we have heard it, we open up our mouth and begin to rehearse it. But there was an evil device. This was an evil plot. This was an evil plan. This was an evil plan that was unleashed on that individual. Okay, so we've got to be discerning. We have to be discerning when people come to us to bring tales, to bring uh, witnesses, testimonies, or whichever about other people. Listen, if you come into me, if you're not talking to me about you, we're not having a conversation. We're not going to have a conversation about someone that's not here, somebody that's not present, right? We're going to talk about you. Let's talk about what's going on in your life. Let's talk about what God, what God is saying and doing in your life, what God is wanting to do in your life. Let's talk about that. But we're not going to talk about Johnny May and Johnny, uh, Jackie and, and John and Stephen and, and Sally. And uh, we're not going to talk about all of them. They're not present to validate what you're saying. But we have a lot of conversations that are taking place like this, and we are destroying lives. We're destroying ministries. We're destroying families. We are destroying our communities, our neighborhoods. We are, come on, we are killing them. The scripture says to us, thou shall not kill. And we feel like because we didn't shoot them, we didn't stab them, we didn't push them down, we didn't throw them in front of the car or anything like that, because there was no physical act, we, we haven't done anything. But guess what? You are killing people with your mouth by the words that you are uttering that is negative. You you are That's killing, you are hell. destroying their reputation, you're destroying their good name, their character out of your anger. Come on, out of your jealousy, come on, out of malicious intentions, you're attacking and killing. And here's the thing, is you release that word in the fit of anger, you release those words in the fit of jealousy. Now, when you overcome, when you recover, those words have already been released. We know this, right? That the power, there is power, life and death, life and death. Come on, there's where the death comes in. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We release these words in that moment of anger, in that moment of jealousy, that fit of rage. We're releasing these words. Those words are not being canceled. When you recover, when you have calmed down, when you have saddled, when God has delivered you, those words are still active. Those words are still working against the individual. They're still in the heart and the mind of the hearer. Can't take those words oh, back. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. 
That's right. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Lives are being destroyed. That marriage has already been torn apart because you released some words in a fit of rage, in your jealousy. Come on, you released these words and they weren't even true. But guess what? That marriage is now destroyed. Come on, that family has been torn up. Come on, that person's ministry has been, come on, it has fallen apart out of words that has been released that cannot be taken. You cannot undo what was done. Can't take it back. You can't take it back. No, you can't take the it back. The damage is done. And guess what? It doesn't matter how much that person tries to defend themselves. Listen, one of the things that 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 happened in my life, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Let me let me let me make sure I cover both sides. All right. One of the things that the Lord had to do for me, and this isn't recent. Let, let me let me digress for a second before I say yeah, that. Let me say up. this. Let, yeah. let me say this. Let me digress right quick and let me say this. Okay. Um, the Lord did have to deal with me. All right. I had to get delivered. I was in this boat, speaking things that I had heard and also speaking things out of anger, speaking things out of hurt. All right. So the Lord had to deal with me in that. But before I one of the things I had to do before I was able to uh, be released to even teach on this was God had to also search my heart. And it's not that he had to do it. It was that I needed him to do it. I had to ask the Lord, Lord, search my heart so that when I teach this and I have to share some things about myself, it is not for justification. I'm not trying to justify myself. I'm not trying to justify anything. I'm not trying to explain anything away. I'm not trying to get at anyone. So I needed to make sure my heart is pure. My heart is clean, right? So that when I begin to share, th you're not looking, mm -mm, no, no. Okay, so he did, made sure that I, clean hands and a pure heart. So in sharing what I share is to the glory of God. So first of all, let me testify and say this, my own confession. Yes, I was one that did the very same thing that I'm talking about now. I too had to repent. I too had to be delivered. I too had to exercise discipline and self-control over my, my own tongue, my own mouth, so that I do not release words in anger. I do not release words in hurt. I do not release words in a fit of rage. That's why people don't understand. A lot of times I will go silent. Some things will happen. Okay, someone will do something or someone will say something and I go silent. And many times people will misunderstand. They will misinterpret my silence in thinking that I have an attitude or whichever. And, you know, in a manner of speaking, perhaps there is some attitude. There's some indignation going on. But I'm silent because I can express my attitude. Those of you that know me, know me well, know that I have no problem expressing yeah, myself, no, okay? I can express my attitude. I can express my anger, but I don't want to displease God. And so my silence, come on, he says, be slow to speak. This is where we exercise that. Be slow to speak. My silence is so that I don't release anything into the atmosphere while I'm in anger or while I'm, he says, what? Be angry, but sin not. So my silence is to make sure that I don't sin in what I speak. Blessings and cursings are not to flow out of the same mouth. God, I don't want to curse not your people. I don't want to curse anybody. Come on. I want to be able to release blessings, okay? And your word says that I can't bless and curse. Come on. And so to make sure that I'm not releasing curses, word curses, hex, vexes, or any of those things and getting myself out of the will of God, I remain, I keep my mouth shut. Exercise, self-control, discipline on that tongue and not release those words in my rage, not release those words in my anger, not release those words because I'm hurting. But allow God, okay, Lord, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me today. That's where I go. Lord, help me. Help me not to say anything. Help me to bridle my tongue. Isn't that what we, what we say in the scripture? Bridle my tongue, Lord. Guess what? He says, bridle it yourself. I'm not going to do what I've given you the power to do. He's given us the power to exercise discipline, exercise self-control over that unruly member. Right? And so, yes, me too. But then also having to go before God and ask the Lord to heal me, and then also following the instructions of God, not to try to explain it away, not to try to defend myself while others are 
spreading lies, spreading rumors, spreading gossip, and come on, let me go ahead and confess, and spreading truth. But let me also say this, everything that they said wasn't true. Listen, but it all is being released, right? And so I'm having to go before the Lord. Lord, search me. Lord, heal me. And then also, as Prophet uh, Bobian was talking about walking in forgiveness, even while they are yet still, they are yet, Minister White, don't, don't jump before me. Don't jump ahead of me. Don't jump ahead of me. <laughs> Stay with me. Okay. Even while they are releasing and still continually, he said, how many times, Lord, must I forgive them that are doing wrong to me, that is hurting me, that is lying on me? How many times must I forgive them that have sinned against me? And I'm forgiving them. And while I'm forgiving them, they're still in the act. You're forgiving them. And while you're forgiving them, they're still in the act of talking about you. They're still in the act of lying. They're still in the, back, in the act of gossiping. They're still in the very act. And you must still forgive. Love on trial. Hello. This is your love that is on trial. You know that they are actively with malicious intent, out of jealousy, out of anger, out of hurt, releasing these words. And he says, you must forgive. How many times must I forgive them, Lord? He says, what? 70 times seven in one day, not in a lifetime. God, that's too much. But that is what he requires. Are we unable to do so? We absolutely can. We absolutely can. So, because how many things, if you can, if you begin to do a tally throughout the day, in one day, how many things have you done that you require that God forgive you for? How many words have you spoken out of your mouth that you have to say, Lord, forgive me? Hmm? How many thoughts that have, have gone through your mind that you have to capture and say, Lord, forgive me for that thought. I'm sure if you tally it up, it goes well beyond. And so therefore we go back to the scripture where he says, the same, listen, the same way you require God to forgive you. He says, listen, if you don't forgive men their, their, their trespasses towards you, neither will your heavenly father forgive you your trespasses. Now, I'm not going to go into that teaching because she already did. I'm not going to go into that teaching because she already did. All right. So the need to forgive them, we must forgive them their trespasses for lying, for, for, for talking about you, for slander, for the gossip. All right. And so I just wanted to share that, you know, I'm not speaking from inexperience. I'm speaking from experience from both sides of the fence. I'm going to I'm not going to make it seem like I haven't I haven't been on. But yes, I have. I was one that he, I had to exercise discipline on my tongue. Right. And at the same time, having to forgive and be healed because of the loosey goosiness of other people's tongue. Come on. Have to do that as well. All right, so let me go ahead and jump. Let me calm myself down. I've been on here a little while and I, I don't want to be too long. I don't want to lose you, but I want you to be able to get this and keep this, okay? So let's go on to the next Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. God, we understand this. These are the things that God does not like. It displeases the Lord that we gossip. It displeases him. So if we are a child of God, if we are children of God, amen forgive. If we are children of God, we should not be involved. Our name should not be attached. Come on. I do not want my name attached to any gossip. I do not want my name attached and said, oh, uh, you know, Raquel said this or Raquel said that. Apostle said this. Apostle said that. Okay. No, no, no. Don't attach my name to none of it. So I keep my mouth off of it. I keep my mouth out of it. Why? I know this one thing. It, dis, it displeases the Lord. It displeases him. And so I won't do what I know is displeasing to the Lord. And I'm going to tell I, I was having a conversation. Um, Apostle and I were having a conversation because we were talking about the message. We were talking about the message from Wednesday night. 
Okay. And, and, and I share with him, I said, Apostle, you know, there are times where it, it, where I'm having to be very mindful because while things are being said, while things are being done um, and they're hurtful things, right. And the flesh does want to rise up because, you know, the very ones that are speaking, they're speaking as though their, their slate is clean. They're speaking as though they have stopped. They're, they're speaking as though they're mature in the things of God. Right. While they're throwing rocks, they're throwing stones, um, you know, and, and, and gossiping and lying and stuff. They're speaking as though they're, they're mature in the things of God and they're no longer doing the things that they've been doing. And I said to him, I said, there is a fight within my members. Paul said that there is a struggle. There's a war within my members. Right. And so I have to exercise this, this, this discipline and self-control where we say do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Sometimes now there's a little red thing that's on my shoulder that's trying to whisper in my ear he, and trying to repeat that scripture to me and say do unto them as they're doing unto you isn't that what the word of god says if they're lying you go ahead and you tell some truths because some of the ones that are speaking there are some things that you know concerning them and it's almost i'm like and i said to him i said apostle it's it's as though they forgot that you know some things about them too not know some things that they did but know some things that they're doing and, and listen, while the red, the little red, I say red, <laughs> and I'm just using imagery here. While that little red devil is on my shoulder trying to whisper, I got Holy Spirit over on this end and he's whispering as well. He says, no, 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 no. You got the spirit of God in you. That is not love. Come on, that is not grace. That is not mercy. Do not, we are not doing an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We began to pray. He begins to listen. He Don't tell me that God won't do it. He does it for me. So I know he can do it for you. He will do it in your life. It's just a matter of whether or not you're going to submit to it, whether or not you're going to take heed to his instruction. Which one of them are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to the re red demon that's on your back or, or the, on your shoulder. Your, perhaps yours may be black. He may be green. I don't know what color it is, but whatever color, you're going to listen to that one or you're going to listen to the voice of the Lord that is speaking to you, telling you not to retaliate, not not to respond to it, not to do an eye for an eye and a two for a two. Don't go after them because they come after you. And I find myself because I want to please God. Listen, my desire to please God is greater, is greater than my worldly reputation. You can destroy that. God can redeem that. God can restore that. Okay. I'd rather be, I'd rather be pleasing to the Lord than to try to justify myself with man. Where did I say we were going? Proverbs chapter 12 and 22. I'm calming myself down so we can get through this. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22. Proverbs 12 and 22. It says, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in a man who is truthful. He delights in a man who is truthful, but he detests a lying lips. He detests a gossiper, a slanderer. He, this is, these are the things that he hates. If you are a child of God, we do the things that pleases God, not the things that he hates. We don't want to do what God detests. We want to do. And what does he, what does, what does he delight in? It says that he delights in the truth. Now, we must be careful even with our truth, because guess what? There are those that would say that they're telling the truth, but they do it in a malicious way. Hello, we, you will do it and you do it in a malicious way, in an evil, in a wicked way. So we have to be careful and mindful of the truths that we release. And we're saying, I'm just telling the truth. Be mindful of that. Where is your heart posture as you're releasing what you call truth? What is your heart posture? Make sure it's, it's coming from a clean place, a sincere place, a pure place. Because the truth is, is that God is looking at your heart when you're releasing what you call the truth. Hello. When you're releasing what you call the truth, make sure that you have searched your heart to know that it is sincere, it is genuine, it is pure, it is clean. There is no malice in it. There is no sowing of discord in it. It is, it, there's no jealousy in there. There's no hatred and animosity in there as you're speaking and releasing your truth. All right, John chapter, whew, yeah, let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. 
I'm going to get through these, you guys. We're going to get through this. John chapter 14, verse 6. John 14 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to me except he comes through, except he comes, I'm sorry, no man comes to the Father except he comes through me. And Jesus said this, he says, my will is to do the will of my Father that has sent me. I think I wrote that down wrong, uh, but I'm going to keep on moving for the sake of time. He says, no one comes to the Father except they come through me, okay? And so what Jesus ministered and what Jesus uh, spoke to us, he spoke the word of God. He spoke the government of the kingdom of God. And so when he began to speak and he says, you know, not to do, not to do eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, just because someone is talking about you, just because they're lying about you, that you turn around and you say, well, I'm justified now in retaliating against them. What did he say for us to do? He said to forgive them. Right. And he also said to pray for them. So this is, this is where it helps us here to understand and to know this. So rather than to become angry, because then it again it deals with our heart posture. If we're going to enter into the kingdom of God, we're going through who? We're going through through Christ. And as he taught us, he taught us this that we're to love them in spite of what they do, in spite of what they say. We still want to walk in love. And so if we're walking in love, he also says to remain in his love, right? If we're going to remain in his love, we cannot exact vengeance. We cannot act in vengeance. I'm going to get them because they were talking about me, because they were lying, because they were releasing all of these things. We're not going to begin to expose their dirt. Right. We're not going to expose that dirty laundry and put it out in the streets and stuff because they're doing it to us. What we're going to do now is we're going to go before God and we're going to intercede and we're going to pray for them because perhaps they're doing it out of anger or hatred or, you know, some malicious, evil or wicked intent is behind what they're doing. And we're praying for God to deliver them. We're praying for God to heal them. We're praying that God will bring them into alignment with his will, into alignment with his word, that they will stop doing what it is that they're doing. We want them to stop doing what it is that they are doing. OK, so we're going to pray for them. And I know I, I listen, I'm not telling you that it's easy, but I am telling you that it is possible. And the more you do it, the more you do it, the more you're able to do it. The more you do it, the more you are able to do it. The less you do it, the more difficult it is for you to do it. I found that it's easier for me to walk in forgiveness. It's easier for me to pray for them that despitefully misuse, abuse, cheat, lie, gossip, and all of those things. It's easier for me to forgive and it's easier for me to pray for them. Why? Because I am practicing doing so all the time. I'm practicing doing it. So, you know, what you practice doing becomes easier to do. But if you don't practice doing it, it remains difficult. It remains a challenge. It remains unattainable. But when we practice doing it, it becomes easier, more attainable, more doable. Okay? And so we want to guard our tongue. We want to guard our tongue. Don't don't say, Lord, help me. It, well, the Lord didn't bridle my tongue, so I guess he wanted me to say it, the devil. Come on, there's a demonic spirit that is that is using you and you are allowing it to use you, justifying it by using the excuse, God didn't bridle my tongue. No, you bridle that tongue. You exercise self-control. Listen, look at this, okay? Can I jump into Genesis? Uh, I think it's Genesis chapter four with Cain and Abel. When God spoke unto Cain, he said to him, he says, master that that is trying to master you. In other words, what he was saying was exercise self-control and discipline discipline over this spirit that is entering in and trying to control your actions, trying to control and manipulate your thought, manipulate what you do. If you don't do so, it's going to overtake you. If you do not discipline this, if you don't exercise mastery over this, it is going to rule you. It is going to control you. So if you don't discipline your tongue, your tongue won't control you. 
Come on. If you don't exercise discipline over your, your tongue, your tongue will rule you. It will have you speaking what you say. I'm just speaking my mind. No, control even that. Control your thoughts. Control your mind. Everything that enters into your mind does not have to come out of your mouth. Take every thought captive. Come on, bring every thought captive into the obedience of the word of God. So every thought that comes into your mouth about your sister, about your brother, about an individual, even those that are doing things against you. Okay, every thought that comes in, especially if it is not good, take that thought and capture it and bring it into the obedience of the word of God so that you don't do anything that causes you to trespass against God. Because guess what? Your act of vengeance, your retaliation against them will cause you to trespass against God. So against God. So you want to guard your tongue. Let's jump back on over into the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 114. Psalms 114, Guard, we're guarding our tongue. We don't want to speak angry words, hateful words, vengeful words, jealous words, right? The scripture tells us to guard our heart because out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your tongue because out of it, it reveals your heart. Your tongue reveals your heart. Did you know that? Your tongue reveals your heart. What you allow to come out of your mouth reveals your heart. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Because what you say is, you, you, you listen, you think you're telling it on people. But what you're doing is you're actually telling on yourself. You may think you're telling on people. You're, you think you're exposing other people. But what you're doing is you're, little do you know, you're telling on yourself, you're exposing your heart. One that speaks lies, that speaks gossip, that is slandering, right? That is speaking hateful words, malicious words. You're revealing your heart. Your heart is evil. Your heart is wicked. And you're trying to do it in the name of God. You think you're, no. If there is malicious intent behind it, come on. You are revealing and exposing your own heart. Whew. Psalms 114. Is that where I'm at? Psalms chapter 114, verse 3, I believe is verse 3. Let me make sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's Psalms 100. I'm Listen, I'm not going to call that. I'm not even going to say that. I take that. I capture that thought. Psalms 141. That's where I'm supposed to be. I said 114. I apologize. It's 141. There we go. Yeah, I got it now. Set a guard over your mouth. Over my mouth, O oh Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. What is the guard? The guard, listen, I know this is in the book of Psalms. Thank you. Set a guard over my mouth, oh Lord. You wanted a guard over your mouth. Holy Spirit is your guard. Will you allow your guard to do what he's been placed in your life to do? I'm trying to help us out. Allow Holy Spirit to do what he's been placed in your life to do before your, your tongue shapes itself to speak what you are about to speak. Holy Spirit speaks and tells you not to. There go the guard that you asked for. Set a guard over my mouth, oh Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. He has given you the Holy Spirit. I said this earlier. He has given you Holy Spirit not to shout and dance and speak in tongues. But he says, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. 
power to discipline that tongue. Now, I'm, I, I just added that part in there. But if you read it, you see you're threading over scorpions and adder. Listen, you've got to thread over the demon that is operating on your tongue. Thread upon that. While we, while we casting out demons here and binding and rebuking demons there, bind and rebuke that demon that's got you lying and gossiping and spreading lies and rumors and gossip or even just spreading stuff about things, things that you know. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips that I not spread lies, spread rumors, spread gossip about my sisters or my brothers, about anyone, that I not destroy other people's lives, that I not, come on, that I not destroy marriages and families and ministries and business, that I not, come on, that I not commit murder with my mouth. Some of you are committing murder with your mouth. Right? So set a guard over your mouth and allow Holy Spirit to, to guard it and to watch over the words even before you utter them. Even before you utter them. Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Blessings to you, Addie. Diane Williams, blessings to you. Psalms 34. Verse 13. It says, keep your tongue from evil. Come on. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Come on, keep yourself from it. Keep yourself out of it. People come to you. First of all, close your ears to it. Don't allow them to come to you with rumors, with lies, with conversations about other people. Don't allow it to even come near you. It's going on. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it. Maybe you should pray about them instead of talking about them. That's one of one of my apostles' words, right? Don't talk about me. Pray for me. Maybe you should talk about, about them. If we encourage them, listen, the more you shut it down, the less they will come to you. I found that to be true in my own life. The more I stop people from coming to me about other people, the less they come. I don't have people come to me about other people. I don't. Not unless they're coming with a prayer request and it is sincerely, genuinely a prayer request. Can you pray for so-and-so? They are da 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 And it stops right there. It doesn't go into, it don't, they're not even any explanation of why they this, that, and the other. It's just pray for this. Just pray for them. And sometimes that's all it is. Pray for so-and-so. Shut it down. The more you shut it down, the less it'll come to you. And before you know it, it won't come to you at all. Why? Because they know you are not a dumping field. You're not a dumpster. Your, your gate is closed. Your ear gate is closed. When the scripture talks, about, when we talk about guarding your gates, guard your gate against gossip, against lies. Exercise that discernment. Exercise your discernment for why somebody is coming to you and talking to you about another individual. Because sometimes they will say, girl, we, we need to pray. Pray about what, honey? We got to pray for Sister Hamburger. Because Sister Hamburger was out there and she I saw her and she was this, that, and the other. Shut it down before they even get there. What, no, you didn't come. They come on the... Um, Come on, under the disguise of a prayer request. But what they actually wanted to do was have you open the door so they can begin to gossip. Close the door. Child, we got to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. See, they didn't expect you to start praying. 
Hello. Shut it down. I'm, I'm looking for my, my next scripture. First Peter. First Peter chapter two and verse one. First Peter chapter two and one. We want to make sure that we're not we're not allowing ourselves to to do what is evil because speaking lies and gossiping and spreading rumors, things that we have heard about another person, especially not knowing if it's truth or a lie. Come on. It's evil. It's wicked in the eyes of God and he hates it. So first Peter chapter two. First Peter chapter two and verse one, it says, therefore, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Of every kind. My translation says of every kind. Rid yourself of malice. There are some conversations, these lies and, and rumors and gossip. There is malicious intent behind it. There is deceitful. It's hot. It, come on. It's hypocritical. I was trying to make sure I said that word right. It's hypocritical because a person comes and they're gossiping. And this is true. There are, there are those that are coming out and they're slandering others for the very same things that they're doing that they feel, oh, well, don't nobody know that I'm doing it. So better they out there than me. So you're deflecting. You're still a hypocrite because you're doing the very same thing that you're talking about somebody else doing. Or listen, or you are upholding or covering somebody else that is doing the same thing that you are slandering another individual for doing. Oh, be careful, little mouth. What you say? He says, rid yourself of malice. You're doing it maliciously. You're doing it deceitfully. You're doing it hypocritically. You're doing it and there's envy in your heart. That's why you're doing it. These are the root behind these things, right? And slander. Come on. Of every kind. There's, no, there's none that is justified. There's no lie that's justifiable. Gossip is not justifiable. You, you can't justify it. None of it is justifiable. He says, get rid of it. Search your heart. Allow God, allow Holy Spirit to search you. Lord, search my heart. Search my soul. Our soul, what is it? Mind, will, and emotion. Search my soul. And if there's anything within my mind, if there's anything in my will, if there's anything in my emotion that has malice, that has deceit, that has hypocrisy, that has envy, that is causing me to slander a, another individual or, or any of that, right? Lord, reveal it, heal it, remove it, pluck it up from the root. He says, get rid of it, rid yourself of it. The stronghold, it's a stronghold in your life. And that stronghold is destroying other lives. Rid yourself of it. Why are you holding on to it? Okay. Why are you holding on to it? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Ephesians chapter four. Whew, the time is going away from me here. Ephesians chapter four. Let me see if I can push these out. <laughs> Ephesians four, verse 31. Get rid of all bitterness. There's bitterness in, in your heart. And because there's bitterness in your heart, you're open. Your air gate is open. Your ear gate is open to hear negative about certain people to hear lies and because you're bitter towards them. So you're, you're open to hear. He says, get rid of the bitterness that causes you to open your ear and then open your mouth. Okay, so you open your ear to hear and receive things, words, and then you open up your mouth and you release it. Then you open up your mouth and release it. But he says, get rid of all bitterness Get rid of the rage, 
come on, get rid of the anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. He says, get rid of it. Come on, he's telling us, stop gossiping about people. Stop lying. Stop being a false witness, a talebearer. Stop. It is, listen, the, the reason why we have gossip columnists, those that, the inquirer and all of these other things, and they're doing well, is because the heart of the people, you love to hear gossip about other people. You love to hear what's going on in somebody else's life, whether it be true or not. You love to hear it. And because they know they will always have clients, they stay in business. And the thing about it is, is that while we're purchasing, while you're buying up their magazine, you're not paying attention to the fact that they're, they're not even, there's, there's no fact check on none of what they said. Nobody's concerned. Is this a true? Is this truth or is this lie? Just eating it up, speaking it out, spewing it out, and not even concerned about the effects that is having on the individual's life. Listen, there's things that's put in these gossip columns and these inquiries and all these different magazines and things like that about people, even on, on, the, on television now. There are things that is put out about them and no one is checking to see whether or not they're true or lies. And no one, is, no one is concerned about the effects that it has on their life. Some of them today have mental issues because of things that is being said about them in the media. Nobody cares. Nobody's concerned. And everybody's like, well, you should have considered that when you went into this field. You should have considered that. You should know that this is what they go. No, no one should have to put up with that because of their career choice, because they choose to be a politician, because they choose to be an actor, because they choose to be an athlete, because they choose whatever career field that they're in. No one should have to say, OK, well, I know I'm going to be talked about. I know I'm going to be lied on. Let me build up myself so I can. No one should have to put up with that. So let's not justify it. Let's not justify us doing so. Lives are being destroyed. People are, people are committing suicide because of gossip, because of lies, because of rumors that they have not been able to recover from. They were unable to recover from the consequences of words spoken by other people that were not even true. Their marriage was not able to recover. Their family was not able to recover. Their ministry was not able to recover. Their businesses were not able to recover. And so they got to a place of being hopeless. We got to break it, break that stronghold. We've got to break this stronghold. Recognize what, what it is that we're doing. We don't want to look and see the consequences of what it is. But guess what? We'll, we'll be judged for it. Whether you, whether you decide to look at it, evaluate, do self-examination or not, that wor those words will come under judgment. Those words will come under judgment. That's right. That's bullying. That is still a form of bullying. And those words will come under judgment. So either you choose to exercise discipline or face the Lord's chastisement and even the Lord's wrath for the words spoken against other people. For the sake of time, let me go ahead and jump to this. How God feels about slander. I was touching on that, right? We talked about that a little bit. How he feels about your, your slandering other people, gossiping about other people, lying about other people. How does God feel about this? Let's jump into Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36 really quick. I know I'm way past my time. I do apologize. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this out. I might have to because I still have quite a bit to go. Um, so chances are we're going to continue this. I'm going to continue. I'm going to have to continue this. I have another project that I've got to do before the night is over. 
Um, so, so I'm not burning the midnight oil. Um, I'm going to carry this over even into another day, but let's go to Matthew chapter 12, right quick, Matthew 12 and 36. I told you God hates this. We already saw this in the book of Proverbs, right? It shows us how the Lord hates gossip. He hates it. He hates lies. He hates slander. Matthew 12 and 36. But I tell you, I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word. Did I not just say that? He says, men will have to give an account on the day of judgment. You will have to give an account on the day of judgment. Please don't think you will escape. For every careless word, <laughs> my God, every careless word is going to come under judgment on that last day. When you stand before God, every word that you spoke against somebody, every word that you spoke that hurt someone, every word that you spoke that destroyed a life, destroyed a family, destroyed a ministry, come on, destroyed a marriage, every word that you release out of your mouth, come on, truth or lie, you released it and it destroyed? He says, but I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment. These are children of God he's talking about. This is not just uh, unsaved people. This is, the, this is the children of God that he's referring to. You will come, uh, you will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word you have spoken. Every careless word that you've spoken. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Psalms 101. I'm trying to move quick, Apostle. I'm trying to move quick. Psalms 101. I'm going to cover this and then we're going to look at the, the rest of it um, on next week, Saturday. If you join me next week, Saturday, prayerfully all goes well at about 6, 6.30 on next week, Saturday. And we're going to pick up where I leave off. But I'm going to close off um, the rest of how God feels about, about this. And then we're going to pick up. Um, we're going to pick up with more of this because this is to help us. This is to help us to break free, to break out of this, to destroy that demon of gossip, of lies. Come on of being a tail bearer, of doing the things that God hates. And I'm here to help us. I'm here to help us. Okay. So again, Psalms 101 and 5. Psalms 101 and 5. <laughs> yes, I'm going to find it right quick. Every, everybody wants to get wealth. Everybody wants the blessing of the Lord. But guess what? It, it, I'm telling you, it comes with conditions. It comes with conditions. The Lord said unto, unto Joshua, he says, if you observe to do all that I have commanded, even through my servant Moses, that I have commanded you to do. He says, I will make your way prosperous and you will have great success. You want your way to be prosperous and you want to have great success. Well, you still have to obey the commands. You have to follow those instructions that God has left because that is when we begin to see success. When we are faithfully observing the things that he commanded us to do. He was faithfully. Everybody wants the blessing of the Lord. We want the riches of the Lord. We want our business blessed, our family blessed. We want healing and all of this. Guess what? He's, his word is still his word. Grace does not absolve you from submitting to and applying the word of God to your life. You're still expected. If you're wanting the blessing that comes, you have to follow the conditions, the stipulations and the requirements. And that is to submit yourself to obeying his instructions. Psalm chapter one in verse, Psalm chapter 101 in verse five. Verse five, he says, whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, just because nobody else heard you doing it. Come on, you told it to this one person and you didn't think just because nobody else knows that you told it. You told it to the person that you know was going to talk, talk and tell everybody else. 
But you figure, well, I only told, I only told uh, Sally Mae, I only, I only told uh, my cousin. But you know, your co your cousin doesn't hold water, right? And even if they don't, they they know how to hold water. Still, you told it. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him will I put to silence. Whoever has a haunty eye and a proud heart, him will I not endure. God, si come on, Lord, silence. Even those that are speaking in secret, silence their voice from speaking lies, from slandering others, from destroying lies with the words that they're speaking, that they're uttering, silence them. Silence the voice of negativity. Of, of gossip, silence their voice from speaking and destroying the lives of leaders and government leaders and entertainment leaders, come on, in education, the leaders in the body of Christ, leaders in the community, silence the voice of negativity, negativity, lies, gossip, silence their voices. Even those that are speaking in secret, behind closed doors, but they're speaking and they're releasing negativity. Even in secret, silence them. Hmm. Whoever silence, whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him I will put to silence. Take away their influence, that they're not able to influence the heart and the mind of other people. Come on, your your come on your words that you're speaking, and you know that you have the in the ability to influence other people and their their view of that person. You know that you have the ability to influence whether another person is going to listen and hear somebody else that is speaking. And because you're jealous, or because you don't like them, or because they said something that they, they anger you, or whichever, you're speaking into their ear negativity, gossip, to influence them not to listen, not to hear even the voice of God that is coming through them. Not to support that business, not to patronize that business. Because you're jealous, because you're angry, because you're bitter. Lord, silence their voice and take away their influence. Yes, I did say it. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. I'm going to read two more just so I can close out in the category I wanted to, how God feels about slander. Proverbs 13 and 3. And then we're going to go to Proverbs 18 and 7. Proverbs 13 and 3. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Proverbs 13 and 3. He who guards his lips guards his life. <laughs> ah, whoo. He who guards his lips guards his life. You want to preserve your lip? You want to preserve your life? Guard your lips. You want to prolong your life? Guard your lips. You know what that says to me? There are some lifespans that has been shortened because of words that they have uttered out of their mouth. And because they continue to do so, God shorter, shortened their days. Their days were numbered on the earth. He who guards his lips guards his life, but he who speaks rashly will come to ruin. He who speaks rashly, who he who speaks in anger, he who speaks out of jealousy, he who speaks out of malicious intentions of the heart will come to ruin. My God. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Proverbs 18 and verse 7. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to a man's innermost hearts. Choice morsels going into a person's innermost heart. It's taking root. And this is why we have to guard our ears against it. That is entering into your heart and it is taking root. 
And guess what? You may not realize it. You may not pay attention to it. I, I began to pay attention to it because Lord, show, he began to reveal some things to me. So I had to pay attention to it. And these are the things that helped me to break free, to break that stronghold, me not opening up my ears to hear uh, rumors and, and gossip and, and what turned out to be lies about in, other individuals. Because guess what? Just as I was saying, their words are influenced. Me too. I have been influenced. It caused you not cause you to look at people differently when you open up your ear to hear lies, rumors, gossip about other people. It changes your view of them. The way you look at them is different. You start looking at them through the lens of the words that had been spoken. Yeah, you do. You start looking at them through the lens of, of the words that have been spoken. But what I have read for you, we've gone into the scriptures and prayerfully you were able to see how God feels. If nothing else, even the other things that we're going to go into in the next in the next uh, teaching on next week, Saturday, if nothing else. The way God feels alone should make you not want to do it, should make you not want to be a part of it, should make you not indulge, not open your ear. And not open your mouth to utter gossip, hearsay, slander, lies, and even if it is true, just knowing that God is God hates it, that alone should encourage you, should provoke you to say, I will not. I will discipline my tongue and I will close my ear against these things. Glory be to God. So Father, we bless your name tonight. God, we give you glory. I thank you, God, for this word. I thank you, God, for even for the ability to convey your heart, Lord God, in this matter. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what we say. Father, tonight we repent, God, of words that we ourselves have spoken. Lord God, some of it has been malicious. Some of it has been out of anger, out of hurt, out, out of hatred, out of jealousy. But Father, tonight, God, we repent of the words spoken in anger, in frustration, out of hurt, out of pain, out of disappointment, in moments of rejection. God, we pray, Lord God, that you would forgive us. But not only that, God, we pray for the individuals to home, God, we release those words again, God, that those words, Lord God, that you would cancel them, God, that those words would fall to the ground. Even now, Lord God, we cancel the assignment of the words that we have released. God, even as we are repenting, we pray, God, that you would wash us, that you would cleanse us purify our hearts, oh God. Give us clean hands and a pure heart, one even towards our sisters and our brothers. Father, your word tells us that whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are of a good report that we ought to think on these things. I pray tonight, Lord God, that we would have those type of thoughts towards one another, towards our neighbors. Your word tells us that this is the greatest command. One of the greatest commands is that we love our neighbor as ourselves. And I pray tonight, Lord God, that we begin to recognize that when we are walking in a spirit where we're gossiping and, and spreading lies and rumors, it, that we are not walking in love. And I pray, Father God, that you would bring us into alignment with your word, into alignment with your will. God, that we will turn away from, from gossip. We will turn away from lies. We will turn away from rumors. We will turn away from doing the things that you hate, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, sanctify our hearts. Sanctify, glory to God, our souls. Sanctify even our tongues tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, for those, oh God, Father God, that have your spirit dwelling within them, that they would exercise self-discipline, self-control over that unruly member. In the flesh, we are we have no control, but by your spirit, we have power. You said, God, that you have given us power. So I pray, God, that with the power that you have given unto them, God, that they would utilize that power to guard their tongue against lies, against spreading gossip and slander against their sisters and their brothers. Father, we pray for the individuals, God, that was on the receiving end 
those have been on the receiving end who who have been hurt by the lies by the rumors by the gossip i pray for them tonight god for healing to take place god that you will bring forth deliverance in their life i pray father god that even the the curses the word curses i, I cancel the the effects of the word curse on their life lord god in the name of jesus the the effects of the of the gossip on their life i cancel it lord god in the name of jesus the influence that it has had some of them oh god are on the verge of giving up they're on the words of throwing on the verge of throwing in the towel they are on the verge of God of even committing suicide but father in the name of Jesus set forth your arrow of deliverance to them tonight and heal deliver and set them free God that those words oh God I, I command that those words be loose from their soul that it would no longer have effects on their actions it will no longer have an effect on their life they will no longer allow what others are saying what others are doing against them to dictate oh god what they do what they say how they act how they come or how they go but father that you would give them holy boldness god that you would give them courage that as your word has said father god your word said no weapon formed against them shall prosper in every lying tongue they shall condemn and so, Father, I pray, God, that they will have the courage, Lord God, and they will have, glory to God, the boldness to begin to condemn the lies, the negativity, the gossip. And even now, Lord God, as we are in prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, I condemn every lie. I condemn every word of gossip, hearsay, words, oh God, spoken out of hatred and malice, evil and wickedness that has caused them to speak words. We condemn those words to death, that no longer will it destroy families. No longer will it destroy and kill lives. No longer will it destroy ministries and businesses. No longer will it destroy them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we condemn it to death. And Father, we pray, Lord God, that even now, God, those with malicious intent, those that refuse to submit to your will and your word, God, that you will bring judgment for correction into their lives. Father God, that they will cease from speaking lies and gossip, cease from doing the things that you hate, uh, doing the things that displeases you. Father, bring them into alignment with your will, uh, into alignment with your word. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, help them to see the consequences. Uh, my God, the consequences of their actions, uh, the consequences of the lies, the consequences, uh, Lord God, of the gossiping. Uh, Lord God, that they will begin to see the consequences, the effects that it is having, uh, how it is destroying people's lives. And Father God, that they would repent and turn away from, from gossip, they, to turn away from the lies, uh, from spreading lies and rumors. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, for those families uh, that has been destroyed, uh, that has fallen apart, those marriages that have been destroyed and fallen apart uh, as a result of things that has been spoken. Uh, Father God, that you would bring forth healing. Uh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, to those relationships, reconciliation, uh, Lord God, would take place in their life in that marriage with that family. Uh, Lord God, the, the family that has been torn apart, children uh, have been torn away from families, from their parents, uh, husbands and wives, because of things that has been said, rumors and gossip uh, that has been released. But Father, I pray for reconciliation to take place. Uh, ministries that has been just demolished uh, because of words spoken. Uh, my God, in the name of Jesus, I pray God for restoration. God, that you would redeem, uh, redeem that ministry, redeem, Lord God, that individual that leader uh, redeem even their reputation oh god in the name of jesus father restore restore glory to god and give them hope my god in the name of jesus restore and give hope to them god in the name of jesus father move by your spirit move by your power in their life today. God, we know, Lord God, that your word is more powerful than the words of the devil. Your will, Lord God, is more powerful than the will of the devil. Glory to God. Your promises, oh God, are more powerful and more fruitful, my God, than the promises of the devil. And so, Father, tonight, God, we activate your promises over the lives of your people. My God, that where the enemy has been wreaking havoc because of the things that has been said, because 
because of the things that has been spoken against them. But God, that your word would supersede those words, supersede those lies, supersede those rumors. And Father God, that they would yet still accomplish what you have said that they would accomplish. Father, we send your word out today in the name of Jesus and that your word will not return back void, but it shall accomplish what has been sent to accomplish. It will accomplish deliverance. It will accomplish healing. It will accomplish breakthrough in the lives of your people in the name of Jesus. It will bring forth correction in the name of Jesus. May your word do, Lord God, what it has been sent to do in the lives of your people tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray tonight, Lord God, that as these words are being released, God, that you would amplify my voice, uh, that your word would reach the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, glory to God, that your people would hear and be blessed. Your people would hear, submit, and turn away from the evil, the wicked. Uh, Lord God, that they are doing, your word says to us, uh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, uh, seek my face and turn from the wickedness, the gossip, uh, the lies the rumors, the slander, turn from the wickedness of their ways. Then we'll be able to hear from heaven and healing can take place like never before. So Father, I pray tonight, God, that you would amplify my voice tonight, oh God, that people would hear, your people would hear this word, my God, and they will humble themselves before you, oh God, in a spirit of repentance as they turn away from doing that, oh God, that you consider to be evil and wicked. And I pray, Lord God, that as they turn back to you, as your people turn back to you, allowing themselves to be governed by your words, God, that you would be glorified. You will be glorified in the healing. You'll be glorified in the deliverance. You will be glorified, oh God, in the reconciliation, in the restoration. You will be glorified in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah and amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory God. to God, Apostle. If you are there on Facebook, you are welcome uh, to take over, sir. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. What a Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Word, what a word, what a word, what a word from the Lord. Amen. I'm going to try to chat it. I'm going to try to get in there with it. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to try to. Amen. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, it was, a, it was a struggle for me to get in there. Can you hear me? Amen. I think I got, I think I, I'm trying. Uh, bless the Lord. Can y'all hear me? Amen. That, that, that was a great word from the Lord. Amen. And we bless the Lord for that word. Amen. That came from this great woman of God. Amen. Uh, can y'all hear me? Can anybody hear me? Can you hear me? Just, just nod if you can hear me. <laughs> Blessings to you, Apostle Pender. I just didn't want to interfere. I didn't want to put my three cents in because the anointing was all over you. We hear you. So I figured that I'd step back and just let you go ahead and let the Lord lead you, as He always does. In that prophetic rainbow word from the Lord on tonight. Well, I, as always, I stole a few pointers from, from you. And, and, uh, Praise be to God. Keep our mouth shut. Amen. I enjoyed <laughs> it. I, I enjoyed it so much. And how God allow you. You over, Listen, I often tell people, someone told me this some time ago. I said, Apostle, that woman know how to go through them scriptures like a name, nothing. I said, well, that comes from studying. That comes from in prayer and seeking the face of the Lord, fasting. Because I listen, people, I can tell you this from a fact. This woman lived what she preached about. 
This woman live what she pray about. She is a walking prophet. I don't find too many prophets. Amen. I don't find, I'm telling you, I'm keeping it real with you. I've seen people come and call folks' name out that don't make you a true prophet because you can discern certain things. Amen. Gifts and call that comes without repentance. Amen. You can have all them gifts and call and they don't repent. This woman here is living that life in its fullness. And I Praise bless God. her on tonight. You've been listening to Discovering the Kingdom, journeying through the scripture with this great woman of God, Apostle Raquel Pender. She is the general overseer of this organization. And I'm so proud to be her covering in Jesus' name. Kingdom Living Prophetic Worship Center is the ministry that God has given to her. Kingdom Network is the assignment that God has planned into her heart. And there's more to come. Amen. There's much more to come in Jesus. Amen. God has given us so much. Listen, I wait. Let me give this to you right here. Y'all pray for me because see, she left certain things in my hand. I'm telling you, that's a dangerous thing to do, especially when I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. On tomorrow, bless the name of the Lord. This great woman of God is going to be coming in the hill. Amen. The broadcast. Amen. Prophetess Cindy Harris. She will be speaking on tomorrow morning at 11 30. Bless the Lord. Amen. And I'm telling you, this great woman of God has such a prophetic message, a prophetic ministry. And she is very transparent. And I love that about preachers who are not ashamed to put themselves out there to illustrate how God wanted to deliver to deliver others. You don't want to miss that tomorrow morning at 1130. Praise God. And then, of course, starting Monday, amen again. Praise God as we journey and keep on going on this sabbatical consecration. Amen. This is the we have. Now listen, let me just say you, and I'm keeping honest with every last one of you. If you can't go 12 hours, sometimes I can't go 12 hours. I'm telling you straight up. I can't go 12 hours sometimes uh, because of my work schedule and the long hours I do work. Amen. Uh, but you go as long as you can. If you can go eight hours, five, six, you do it. But try as much as you can to separate yourself in your consecration. Even though you may not be eating, you want to be able to stay, still stay apart so you can finish out the remaining time. Me, God just gave me some information, and I'll tell you about that Apostle Bender when I get off the air. God has given me okay. some information on this consecration sabbatical. Amen. Praise God. And again, I say this is my prayer partner. Amen. Whenever God speaks, she rides on my own with me. I thank the Lord for that on today. So join us, amen, in our morning glory. Morning glory will continuously to be every morning at 6. If we cancel some morning, there will be some mornings where we will cancel, but we will still, praise God, have our morning glory. Bless the Lord. Amen and amen. And amen. And again, this is Discovering the Kingdom, Journey through the Scripture with our own Apostle Raquel Pinder, as God uses this great woman of God to preach the Word of God. Also, with the sons that the Lord has given her, the Warriors Prayer Room. Nope, we didn't forget about you. Yes, we are available to take your prayer request. You can text us at this number, 941 283 That's 941 283 Six nine four one. Now, this is not a personal thing in terms of you want to call and just kick it with people or chat with people. You got a prayer request, put it in the system, and we'll get it and we will take it to the Lord in prayer. If you missed any of the broadcast, you can tune in to the KLPWC Kingdom Network. You can tune in to Kingdom Living Prophetic Worship Center. And last but not least, you can tune in to Holy Hill Churches Worldwide. All three networks will provide you all of the sermons, the messages, the lessons that we have been teaching and preaching, amen, down through the months and through the days. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen and amen and amen. We just thank you so much for joining us on this night. Amen. And we would like to invite you back again. Praise God on our part three in love on trial. And of course, we don't know what that under topic is going to be, but we do know this. 
in this week we enjoy this great topic the devil as always tried to come up against us but this great woman of god side kicked him this time she gave him a body slam she gave him one of them side kick he just thought she was out one of the things i love about her she doesn't give up when i be telling her let's try it again next week next year or next month she said no uh -uh, god said now and i gotta do it now it's a message in my belly and i must produce it i don't know how many people got saved tonight if you're here today and if you don't know the lord jesus christ as your personal savior listen to this message that god has given this woman of god on today it is so easy it is not complicated amen and all god wants you to do is yield. i am not going to go and try to re-preach I just want to give the announcement to alert people. Amen. Praise God on what's going on in the upcoming days. If the Lord shall say the same and doesn't come back for us. So again, you have been listening to Discovering the Kingdom, journeying through the scripture with this great woman of God, Apostle Raquel Fender. Bless the Lord. And we bless God for her on today. Again, join us tomorrow morning at 1130. If God shall say the same, it does not come back for our soul. We will be there enjoying the Lord for part two of what God is going to do to this other prophet. In the meantime, people, do yourself a favor. Be careful of that, 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 that little mouth, what we say. Because that little tongue that's in our little mouth, sometimes big mouth, it can cause a lot of damage. That's right. That little tongue can destroy, it can bless, but then again, it can curse. Which direction you should go is up to you. Which direction you want, you're going, rather. It is totally up to you. God does not make us, but he gives us a choice. Blessings to you. Thank you, Brother Norman, Pastor Norman White, and the uh, rest of them. I think I saw Apostle Donaldson come in, and of course, uh, Sister Diana Williams and the rest of the crew that came and joined us. Those of you that have been or have or joined us on Clubhouse, we want to bless God for you, Sister Evangelist, uh, Tawana Bellinger, and this other young lady, Sister Abba. I hope I got that name right. I am so used to messing up names. Uh, don't talk about me. Pray for me in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us. Until the next time, this is your host, Apostle Michael Bogan, and greatly uh, telling you, thank you for joining us. Amen. The speaker today was our own general overseer, Apostle Raquel Fender. Apostle, we love you. You already know that. And we're looking forward, amen, to hearing some more of that good old teaching word. Blessings to you. Peace from God, Father, our Lord, and Jesus Christ. Till the next time, this has been Discovering the Kingdom with yours truly, Apostle Raphael Fender, and of course, your host, Apostle Bogan. We'll see you the next time. Blessings to you and peace from God, the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.